So can you explain us what you mean for a, um, a reasonable or a sensible uh, environmentalist? And the second uh, question, um, which is very fascinating in the book, you said that the problem with the Greenpeace was, starting from uh, some point on, uh, that it was not just anti-development or anti-business or anti-science, which is particularly uh, bad for you, but also anti-human, in the meaning that uh, um, there is a part of the environmental movement which uh, thinks that human, um, humans are a problem for the nature, uh, uh, like they uh, would be two different and separate and opposite realities, you know, humans and nature. And the problem we have uh, seven billion people <laughs> living uh, on the earth and uh, uh, very much interested in, uh, in, uh, in living well, in living in, uh, not in poverty and in, in, in need. Uh, so um, uh, you've made the, the, you explained this with the, with the case for forestry, which is extremely clear in order to explain this issue. So this is a two questions for a start and then we will see. Thanks, Antonio. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming, and thanks for uh, the university for the invitation. I appreciate it greatly, and it's such a beautiful campus here. Um, the first question is really a purely practical one. What is a sensible or what is a reasonable environmentalist? Uh, reason is about logic, and we need to take our scientific knowledge, what we know to be facts, and apply logic and reason to them in order to come to conclusions. And for example, one of the problems I found with my fellow environmental directors in Greenpeace was, as you say, they sort of don't like people. People are perceived as almost kind of a disease on the earth, which is spreading and killing nature. And the idea is the earth is dying because of the humans. Well, first, the Earth is not dying. The Earth is still very green and beautiful, as far as I can see. Maybe it's getting a little bit warmer. Maybe that won't be such a bad thing, especially for people in Siberia and northern Canada. But a logical person would not be able to see how, if nature is so wonderful, and Kiko Testa and I were talking about this earlier, if nature is so wonderful, why would nature produce humans which are evil? Doesn't make any sense at all. A sensible environmentalist would question that. Surely humans are part of nature. If nature is beautiful, then we are beautiful. We're all one and the same part of nature. We came with evolution like every other species. The environmental movement has almost adopted the idea of original sin for humans only. Other species, they are wonderful. They do no harm. They do no bad. But humans are by nature like a rogue species, which almost has been sent to destroy the earth. I just don't believe in all that stuff. It's too much like fire and brimstone to me too much like we're going to hell and all of that. And I don't think religious thinking should come in to environmental thinking in that way. So personally, I believe that a sensible environmentalist will just look at the face of the situation, recognize that there are nearly 7 billion people and that 2 more billion are probably coming before the population begins to level off in about 50 years from now, which is the prediction. And that's a good thing. We can feed these people. We have the ability to do that. We have the ability to be intelligent and to change our technologies in ways that don't damage the earth so much as maybe some of them now. And that is why in the book I focus so much on fossil fuels. And I agree with the environmental movement on this one point that we need to reduce our fossil fuels. But the problem is then they lose their sense and their reason and more or less refuse, as I explain in the book, they refuse to accept the solutions to this problem. 
how do we stop using so much fossil fuel to make our electricity, to keep these lights on and run our factories? And they say the solution is wind, wind energy, almost ignoring the fact that the wind only blows about 25% of the time. <coughs> how would we have electricity today? There's no wind there. And we have to ask that question. Because if we accept this is the solution, just build wind farms everywhere, then we will have no money to build something that might actually work. Because we will spend on all, all our money on something that doesn't work. And so it's simply a matter of applying, of applying logic, reason, and science to the discussion and getting away from rigid, as was mentioned, kind of the rigid, dogmatic approach to environmentalism, where it is kind of an ideology, more like politics and religion, and not like science. And that's why I had to leave Greenpeace so many years ago now. What about forestry, the trees? Yeah. I wrote another book, which I think will also be translated into Italian, as, as this book, uh, Sensible Environmentalist, uh, this book was titled, Trees Are the Answer. And so you have to think, well, what are the questions then, if trees are the answer? And for me, trees are the answer to a lot of questions about our future. Trees are the most important plants on the earth. But you ask questions like, what is the most environmentally friendly thing to build my house with? How can I pull carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and reduce the impact of fossil fuel emissions? How can I build healthy soils, clean the water and the air? How can I provide more habitat for wildlife and biodiversity? How can I make the earth more beautiful and green? all the way from the most practical of what we should build our homes with to the most aesthetic about how we can make the world prettier. The answer is trees and the wood they produce and the environment they produce while they're growing. So my solution is grow more trees and use more wood. My friends in Greenpeace their position is stop cutting trees. Leave the trees growing. This is, for them, the best way to save the environment. If you read the book, you will see that this is actually an anti-environmental position to say this. Because wood is the most important renewable energy resource in the world. About 70% of all the renewable energy that is used by people is wood and woody materials, biomass. In addition, wood is by far the most important renewable material which we use for building and furniture, paper, etc. So it is both the most important energy and the most important material which is renewable. Every time you stop using wood, then you have to use more steel and concrete. Every time you use steel and concrete, you use more fossil fuel, whereas wood is produced by solar energy. And in fact, the most important solar collectors are not the photo panels on your roof. It is the leaves on the trees, which are the most important solar collectors on Earth. Trees capture more energy each year than all of human civilization is using. And they turn it in to a stored substance called wood where the sunlight is stored in the wood. 